Hi, I'm Steve Smith. I'm a research professor of robotics, uh, where I head the Intelligent Coordination and Logistics Lab. Uh, the question I'm going to discuss today is how can smart transportation help Pittsburgh to use less fuel? I'm going to focus specifically on uh, traffic congestion, uh, a problem I've been working on for the last couple of years. Um, uh, because of the simple fact that traffic congestion, particularly in urban areas, um, increases fuel consumption. And uh, so if we could do something about traffic congestion, then uh, uh, we can certainly uh, make an impact on consuming fuel. Uh, I've, I've put a couple of statistics here the, from the, uh, I guess, the uh, 2011 uh, annual mobility report um, that in Pittsburgh, uh, the annual per capita cost of congestion to commuters in terms of lost time and added fuel costs is, is about $800. If I look at that nationwide over um, 440 urban centers, I see that the, the, the costs uh, of, uh, in terms of added fuel uh, are over $101 billion. So another stat that, that's interesting about uh, traffic congestion, particularly in urban areas, is that 40% of the time that people are, that vehicles spend on surface streets in urban settings uh, are, are typically spent idling. Uh, so uh, how can we uh, improve uh, traffic congestion? Well, there are a couple different ways. One is that we could uh, increase the road capacity in an area. Uh, unfortunately, in Pittsburgh, uh, as in many urban areas, it's not really possible to build out uh, build more capacity, road capacity, uh, it's geographic constraints in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, there's also, you know, land is being used and it, it's hard to reclaim it. So, so the, other, uh, the other approach then is to uh, make uh, uh, reduce congestion by making traffic flow more directly or more smoothly and that's what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to argue today that smarter, smarter traffic signals uh, my slant on uh, smart transportation uh, can help here. It's generally recognized that uh, traffic signal control improvements really provide you with the biggest uh, possible payoff for uh, reducing congestion on, sur on surface streets. And uh, of the kinds of uh, approaches you can take to traffic signal control, uh, probably the one that uh, shows the most promise uh, generally believe this hold the most promise are, are what are called adaptive traffic signal control systems. Uh, they're not in wide use yet, but um, adaptive traffic control systems are distinguished by the fact that they actually sense the traffic in front of the intersection and somehow re respond uh, adjusting the, the, the green periods at the intersections based on what, what uh, the traffic flows that are presented in front of them. Uh, there are some examples of adaptive traffic signal control systems uh, being piloted in the U.S., principally in arterial situations, settings where uh, you have a single main road and you're using the adaptive control to sort of manage uh, flows off of side streets onto this main artery. For the past uh, couple years, uh, I've been... Uh, with funding out in the Traffic 21 a research initiative here at CMU, been focusing on looking at the problem of adaptive traffic signal control in the more complex setting of urban road networks, uh, specifically focusing on downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, my group uh, has, has the, the goal of this work uh, is, is really real-time optimization of traffic flows in urban road networks. Uh, urban road networks, grids, you can think of it, um, uh, present a, a greater challenge than arterial kind of settings in a couple of respects. Uh, one is um, that uh, instead of just having a single dominant flow, there are typically multiple, uh, typically competing flows that have to be managed, uh, which, which evolve and change over time. Um, the other uh, challenge that we're interested in is, is true real-time control. If I look at the adaptive control systems that are out there commercially, uh, many of them operate on a less than real-time time scale. They, uh, uh, you know, sort of pull information maybe into a back, uh, uh, a back central reasoning location and then adjust the lights on the order of every 5, 10, 15 minutes. We're really looking at real-time 
uh, real-time uh, adjustment of the signals to, to cope with, with uh, even discontinuous kinds of shifts like traffic accidents or uh, uh, the ends of uh, a sporting or cultural event where garages are emptying, those kinds of things. Our technical approach has really focused, it has two sort of key ideas. Uh, one is we start from the assumption of decentralized control. Uh, we, uh, our approach, uh, in our approach, each intersection controls itself. It watches the traffic in front of it, controls itself, and then um, in real time decides how to divide up the green time between uh, the different uh, phases of the intersection to, to, allow, uh, uh, to allow the traffic to, to, to move through uh, most smoothly. Uh, but even though each intersection is operating independently, uh, they do coordinate their actions by, exchange, by simply exchanging information. So, so once, uh, once an intersection builds a, a, its schedule, um, that gets communicated to neighboring intersections, and then that information can get incorporated, uh, essentially providing a larger horizon, which allows it, allows the creation of, of green corridors if the, if, the, if the dominant traffic flow uh, warrants that. Over the course of the project, we spent, uh, we've spent we made uh, some interesting progress. In 2010-11, we spent developing the core approach and demonstrating its effectiveness in simulation on a downtown road network uh, using uh, 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 the, the traffic plans and uh, traffic counts provided by the city of Pittsburgh, um, we were able to, to produce some very favorable comparisons to the existing uh, traffic control plans that are in, in force down in, the, down in the Triangle area of Pittsburgh. Uh, over the last year, we've been focusing on carrying out a pilot implementation of our system and a pilot test in the East Liberty region of, of Pittsburgh, and I'll, I'll spend the rest of the time Kind of summarizing that. So here's a picture of the, um, the, the, the pilot implementation site. It's, a, it's an area of East Liberty that surrounds the um, uh, essentially a new target uh, department store that has, has, has entered into the, uh, that it was, was created, was built last, uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, what is nice about this, this particular site, here's the target, is, is that uh, these blue circled intersections uh, all, as part of the redevelopment of the, uh, and introduction of the target department store, these, these intersections were rebuilt and outfitted with, with camera detection. So uh, it's a great low cost way of us trying to test out our adaptive system. Uh, we consulted with the city and uh, actually the city uh, suggested that uh, we add in this ninth intersection, and uh, and uh, which would create a more of a grid pattern, uh, which uh, and a more challenging uh, environment for 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 us to, to try out on. So, um, with uh, we were able to obtain funding from the Heinz Endowments uh, through their uh, Breathe initiative, basically motivated by the idea of, of of reducing emissions and air pollutants in the air by improving traffic flow. And, uh, and this is the, the test site we came up with. So, so let's see if I can find the cursor here. There's, so there are really th three dominant flows through this area. There's this one, uh, there's Penn Avenue cutting through Penn Circle, and then there's also this third flow moving back and forth this way. Uh, so a challenging event environment. So here's a, just a concept of operation. Here's our, of the basic system that we built to put into that thing. So the basic idea is, uh, let's see. Uh, we, we, we use the cameras. We, we're taking real-time video feeds from the cameras. Those are extracted and uh, pushed into the, the SureTrack system, a, a processor that's running our strategy. Then this system, for each intersection, will compute a schedule that essentially optimizes uh, the movement of, of all the vehicles that it sees currently through the intersection, so sort of minimize dead time. And then based on that schedule, it'll send commands to the actual controller, the piece of hardware that actually runs the traffic light and enforces the safety constraints. Once uh, that schedule is built, it's also then communicated to downstream neighbors. 
and then that gives the uh, that indicates what's coming down the the pike to, to to that intersection, and as it's building its plan, it can use it has a more now extended horizon that it can use to uh, uh, do its planning, and then that whole process gets repeated every few seconds. So it's very real time. Uh, we're, we're running. Uh, yeah. Recomputing the plan, uh, detecting new traffic, and, and reconnecting every couple seconds. So here's a here's a short video of the of the system in action. Uh, sort of on the before on the left hand side is the situation before we installed the pre-existing control, and then on the right hand side is the same intersection. This is the main intersection in the pilot site. The uh, pen and pen circle intersection. Um, so this this video is sped up to about eight times so that we can see the, the more the aggregate flows moving through. But if you look closely, I think you'll you'll uh, agree that that you've you've got a uh, higher volumes on the left. So it's, these are taken at the same time of day. So it's really the the improved flow. We did a controlled study of the. Of, of the, the system uh, by performing a series of before and after run-throughs of or drive-throughs uh, along each of 12 different routes through this pilot site. We, we kind of picked the 12 highest volume routes uh, and drove, drove them multiple times or over, I mean, across multiple days uh, for each of four different periods of the day, uh, the AM rush period, the midday period, the PM rush, and the evening. Uh, and as we did these driving, we, did, we, we carried a GPS tracking device that essentially recorded our, speed, our, our uh, travel times and the number of stops we made, the amount of time we were uh, idle, sitting idle at, at lights, etc. Um, and then we processed that information. We did that both with the pre-existing control plans that were in place at the intersection and uh, then after we installed our system, uh, we ran them again to, to do a comparative kinds of kind of analysis. Um, one thing we did in aggregating the data, we, we used the traffic volume data to combine the data along different routes so that we, we get a pretty well meaning. So as you can see from the statistics on this slide, uh, the, 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 uh, the adaptive system actually had a quite a significant impact uh, on the on uh, several sort of common metrics, uh, ranging from sort of a, an average reduction in travel, and travel time of 25%, an average uh, increase in speed of 34%, uh, number of stops uh, reduced by 31%, and the wait time reduced by 40%. So all of that sort of translates to, if I want to look at, at fuel consumption, uh, we get an average uh, reduction in, in fuel consumption of, of 21.5%. So uh, a fairly significant, um, uh, both in terms of, of improving the efficiency of the process and also uh, improving the, the uh, fuel consumption and uh, release of emissions into the, into the air. So... What are our current plans? Well, we, we, we have plans to, uh, we're currently uh, uh, planning to expand the, the pilot test, uh, and we're, we're sort of looking in two directions right now. Uh, in the fall, we hope to uh, push eastward toward uh, Bakery Square and Fifth Avenue. That's the, the, the diagram in the upper right there. Uh, this is actually a, a fairly uh, uh, low-cost extension. The, the green intersections in that little map there already have camera detection that I think were put in place with the uh, renovation of Bakery Square. Um, so, And then in a, in a second phase, we'd like to uh, expand west along the Baum and Center corridors. So that's the, the, the map uh, in the bottom right corner there. Uh, in 2013, the city has funds to uh, uh, and, and they are planning to upgrade uh, 22 intersections along those two corridors um, uh, to have uh, new controllers and, uh, and fiber optic cable that, that provides a communication infrastructure. So that would, would be, a, uh, that again would be a, a great uh, infrastructure to build on that would get us part of the way. We'd have to, we'd have to buy the cameras, but uh, 
we get that. The, the vision, the interesting vision is if, if, uh, if we expand in both these directions, uh, the west corridor hooks up to Craig Street and Bigelow, and, and so in essence, you, we, we will have created a virtual corridor from uh, the east end downtown, and uh, potentially providing a, a, uh, an alternative to uh, some of the Parkway East traffic. So uh, this is kind of part of the vision. Uh, if we, in fact, were to extend all 600 in intersections in the city of Pittsburgh, we would uh, reduce fuel consumption annually by 4.3 million gallons. So um, there's a lot to be gained uh, by doing a, a smarter job of, uh, of uh, managing traffic lights.